In this episode of MPTV, we talk to a restaurant vet. We talk to Carla from a Lens Eatery. Carla's got an amazing story. 14 years old, started in the business, all the way up now to where she owns four locations of a Lens. We talk about the human capital element and how she treats people, how she'd want to be treated, and how you should be treating people, which you probably are, but also more importantly, what did she get from her time in the restaurant business? One of the greatest things she did was she was in the franchise business helping open restaurants like this. She eventually transitioned into the owner. What did she take from that to help her be successful? Let's find out. Hey, what's going on? It's Matt, and we are here at a Lens Eatery, and we're with Carla, the owner. Thank you, Carla, for being on the show. Thank you for having me. So, as I mentioned before we went on air, MPTV is about making profit in the restaurant business. MP, my initials, Matt Pleff, the clever little logo. I love it. But also, what restaurateurs, owners, operators can do to make an impact, a great experience for consumers, but at the end of the day, the word profit is elusive in small business, especially restaurants. Especially in restaurants. And that's what I want to talk about. So when we were talking beforehand, you've got a pretty unique background in the restaurant business. So I guess tell us about you and how you got to this point. Um, so I started with Aladdin's Eatery about 22 years ago. Um, I was the director, well no, at that time I was a child and I started off as a server. <laughs> you know, So I, I kind of put my foot in the door. I was a hostess and a server um, and it was like my first taste of restaurant life. Uh, I quickly became a manager. By the time I was 18, I was general manager. And then um, from there, I transitioned into the corporate office where I was director of training, which basically meant I would travel around and open up new stores. So yeah. I would go from city to city, um, help them get all their smallware orders, you know, set up the entire store from the ground up, find and help them hire staff, train staff get this restaurant going, you know, um, offer my assistance for the whole beginning phase of the opening. And then at that point, I'd leave them to do, to do their, you know, day-to-day -day -day business. Yeah. yeah, and then I would just fly back home, get to be home for a few weeks, and then probably do it again somewhere, somewhere in the near future. So that was kind of my life for a good portion of time. And then I would take care of the corporate stores while I was home, because we had a lot of our corporate stores in the Cleveland area. Okay. And I would visit all of them and, you know, make sure all of our manuals were up to date, rewriting a lot of the manuals and, and different things like that. And so that led to you getting the opportunity to buy into this location. Exactly. So then I actually ended up helping open this location in 2008, which was a horrible year to be opening up a restaurant. <laughs> 2008 recession. I know it well. Exactly. So, you know, they, we had just opened up this restaurant and um, it probably had only been three months that it had been open. Um, and I ended up buying out the previous partner and my brother and I both did. So my brother was the director of operations who was also my business partner here. He and I both bought in and we've been here ever since. It's been about 12 years now. This is our very first, this was our first location. So that, that's a, an awesome story because, you know, a lot of people get in the restaurant business for different reasons. Right. And a lot of people, I've, many people we've interviewed on the show have started off as servers and the hostesses. Your experience though being that, that director of training going around, I'm sure you saw a lot of things that you would walk in and go, oh my gosh, they're not doing this. Or Immediately. <laughs> yeah, it was like you, you had like, I don't know, x-ray vision or something. You know, you'd walk in, you, it would stick out like a sore thumb. You'd look around and you could immediately, one of my big things was the handrail. You know, because I'd come in during the construction phase and I could walk in and eyeball a handrail and say, that's too low or that's too high. And that was like, you know, just just from the first glance, I could see when something was out of place, it became second nature, you know. So when you became an owner, did you now have a different lens or was that a good transition that you kind of what you were already looking for and advising? Now, all of a sudden, it's your baby and it's your dollars. So I would say a little bit of both. I feel like I was more than prepared to be an owner because I would look at things through a very skeptical you know, lens where I could see the little nuances that you needed to have a successful business. I will say though that becoming an owner, there was a layer of other information that you have to learn. You know, permits and paying your taxes and you know, all the different types of taxes you have to pay. You know, um, so that level, that level was kind of uh, paired into my knowledge once I became an owner. Yeah, I, I remember when I started my agency, now I was unique, I had a background, we actually, we talked about this earlier, I had a boat and RV dealership that we were trying to close during the uh, economic collapse of 08. 
the economy closed it for us. Yeah. Long story, it hurt. I understand what it's like to lose a million dollars in my 30s now. No. But I remember when I, the, the boat dealership was unique in that we were, we were doing 15 million a year in sales and from our beginning we grew really quick and money wasn't an issue to buy stuff. But when I started my consulting firm, I remember going and looking at what a desk cost, yeah. what a chair cost, what a copy machine cost. You're like, oh my goodness. Yeah. I mean, when you get into a restaurant, like you had been, probably a lot of those things I'm guessing you had not really de dove into much. You were more the operations, but that had to be sticker shock, I would imagine. Yeah, you know, I was kind of lucky because I did have to do small wares orders and things like that. So I did have to set up their offices for yep. them. So I did know the sticker tags for that. I knew, you know, and just like artwork and, you know, basically everything ground up construction wise I was involved in, okay. you know, so for me it was a lot more of just like the taxation and permitting and this the things that you have to you know business writing out business plans and submitting them getting your liquor license yeah. you know trexing in a liquor license if one's not available you know those are the types of things that really only the owner has to do and i would just come in and kind of i would do everything with restaurant they'd have to do all the other things that you know came with creating their llc's and becoming a business entity so that they could have the restaurant that's all the stuff that really was like okay yeah. New level of things to learn. Yeah, I, I remember my first experience with banners on a building. Uh, it was our dealership, and we had moved into Boone County, Kentucky, actually where I live. And apparently, you could only have a banner up for two days at a time and four times a year. It was some weird rule. Right? There's always a weird rule. And if, sure enough, I have this banner up, and this guy comes knocking on my door, and I'm like, "Can I help you?" He's like, "Yeah, I'm here for permits and this." I'm like, "What do you mean? It's my property, my window." He's like, "No." He's like. But I put on the inside, he's like, I can't say you can't do that, but yeah, and I, so now taking 10 off windows, but there's a lot of things you don't know. So yeah. if you're talking to another restaurant, you're looking at somebody that's got a restaurant right now or somebody that's looking at getting into it, what are a couple of things that you brought with you from that getting to see everybody's operations into yours that you immediately said, hey, this is my, got to be my stamp on this business? Okay, that's a, that's a loaded question. So I would <laughs> say, um, first and foremost, you know, if you're going to get into it, I think a lot of times people think that if you can cook, you can own a restaurant. Those are two, those are, those are not the same things. You know, you can be great at cooking. You could love to cook. You could be awesome with flavors. That is not going to make you a successful business owner, restaurateur. Yeah. You have to understand business, understand profit and loss margins, understand how to, you know, it's not about the food aspect. You know, you do need to understand how to have good food and something that people want, but you can't do that solely without having the business background to really understand how to structure your business to succeed. Yeah. So I would say you'd have to know the business aspect, and if you don't, learn it before you do this. Um, the second part of it is, um, I think the major thing I learned is the type of business owner I want to be. I think um, across all businesses, you know, prop, bottom line is always, you know, what everyone's most interested in. And, you know, I am interested in that, obviously. I'm a business owner. I want us to be successful and profitable. But for me, my morals and standards take precedence over the bottom line. So, you know, I, I saw a lot of really, you know, terrible types of, um, you know, handling of employees, you know, just things that I'm not okay with as a business owner. I think a lot of times business owners are okay with, you know, hurting someone else to get ahead, to make sure their bottom line is where it needs to be. Anything to get a dollar. Anything. And for me, that is the opposite. I, I'm, I'm like an avid believer in taking care of my people. You know, the people who work for us are my people. They're my family. They're my friends. Um, I would not want to put them in harm's way or make decisions that adversely affect them just to you know make that extra dollar you know uh, so for me the people are everything yeah. you know they are the business if you don't have good people and you don't treat your people well you have no business you know and and I feel like that investment in your people is more important than probably any investment you make because they are what make your business flourish you know for example we still have people that started off with us 12 years ago that still work for me to this day he's actually standing right there yeah. so you know the fact that I have somebody who has been in this industry since the birth of my business still with me is nearly impossible. Yeah. You know, the turnover in restaurants is, is very difficult. Yeah. And um, that has to do with treating people the way they deserve to be treated. You know, making sure that they're appreciated, making sure that they're loved and respected, make sure, making sure they're safe. You know, those are all the things for for us that are super important. And I feel like that it, that that alone has helped my business. It wasn't me building my business. Yeah. It was me with my family and friends building our business, you know? And you, you said something we were talking earlier about how your customers are treated, to, or how your customers treat the employees too. Because yeah. I, I never forget an instance I had when we had our boat and RV dealership, I was the boss. My brother, who's five years older than me, was one of the managers. We were equal partners, but it just wasn't his role of managing people. 
and he was one of these real quiet, you know, customers always write things. Yeah. And I'll never forget this one time I walked down the hallway and I hear this guy just every word you could possibly imagine to my brother. And I walked down and I said, excuse me. He said, oh, hey, Matt, how you doing? I'm like, apparently I'm doing a lot better than you. Uh, you need to leave the property. What do you mean? I'm like, I just heard how you were talking to my brother. I don't care if he's my brother and an employee. You don't treat people like that. I mean, like, mm -hmm. especially over something like a boat part. Yeah. You know, it, it's not that important at the end of the day. And, I, and my brother, when that happened, I remember him telling me he appreciated it because he's like, man, I, I didn't know what to do. Yeah. Like, yeah, well, part of me wanted to twist the guy's head off. He's like, well, I know I can't do that. <laughs> right, right. Uh, but he's like, I appreciate you have my back because a lot of times in business, you know, the customer's not, I mean, I like to see the customer is always right, but they're not in that. It's just a way you treat humans. Yeah. Yeah, there's a bottom line of respect that has to be observed by everybody, you know, and as a business, we always try to do right by our customers, you know, even if they are maybe in the wrong, I will always try to make it right for them. Uh, but I will not let them verbally assault my staff or, you know, act in a way that, you know, lacks decorum or respect. Like that's, that's a crossing over a yeah. line, you know what I mean? The One of the things I learned through looking back from 08, 07, 06, because if I kind of knew what I do now doing about business, I would have saw the 08 recession coming because I can right. look back at what happened in 07 in our business and I could see the way the banks changed how they acted and it was a pretty telltale sign. But that year of 08 for us, we made a lot of business decisions because we financially had to. Right. And when we got out of the business, I remember when I wrote the mission statement for my company, I said, I don't want to make business decisions based on finances because it led us down the wrong path. Right. I know you mentioned that earlier, you have not making decisions about your business that, you know, probably affect employees versus maybe affect the profit. Right. Okay, break time. Restauranters, it's Matt. And if you're watching MPTV, you're obviously interested in improving your business. What if I told you you could finally take the hope and pray out of your marketing plan and spend money and see results? You see, most marketing starts with the same exact tactic. You gain the attention of somebody, but that's where the majority of it stops. What we do with the ROI engine is help you gain amazing attention which drives gigantic engagement. That engagement leads to customers to tell us who they are, meaning they opt into your email, text, and birthday program, and then we drive them to buy something. We've got a lot of great programs that can help you, and we'd love to have a conversation with you. If you're interested, it's easy. Check out roiexperts.net. You can schedule an appointment, and we'll hop on a call with you. Worst case scenario, you learn how to market your restaurant like you've never heard of before. Back to the action. What are, what are a couple things that, that you've done differently with employees to keep somebody here for 12 years? Because that's unique in a concept like this. Right, right. Um, you know, one is we treat people with respect always you know i don't i don't tolerate people being disrespectful to each other even you know if there's a situation with the staff members we sit down we talk about it we hash it out and we we fix the problem you know we're solutions people so we always make sure that that kind of is uh a main, you know everyone knows that you have to have you know a level of respect for each other uh you know i i i care for them so if they're going through something emotional it's an open door policy if you have to talk about something that's personal they're welcome to do that you know my phone number hangs on a board here so it's not like you have to go through 78 people to talk to the owner you know i work i work with them i've since for 22 years i would I've cooked, I've washed dishes, I've cleaned bathrooms, I've set tables, I've taken money, I've expoed, you know, I've done all the positions. So it's not like I've asked them to do anything that I haven't done standing right there in the trenches with them. So, you know, I've been there with them doing all of those things. So I think that also fosters, um, you know, a feeling of camaraderie. You're not just demanding them to yeah. do different things. You're doing it with them. And they you know, know you've been there. Yeah, exactly. You know, they see me cleaning toilets. So, you know, if I ask them to clean a bathroom, they're not going to say no. Yeah. You know, it's it's what we all do. That's what we do to run the business. All jobs are important, you know. Um, so I feel like, you know, being an owner operator was always important because they would see my face. They knew who I was. I wasn't this nameless person that signed their paycheck, you know. Um, and if again, if they needed me, I was a phone call away. They could pick up the phone, look at the board, dial my number, and they'd get a direct line to my cell phone, which to this day they all still have. Yep. You know, um, you know, even though I've done this for 22 years, I've never pulled myself out of the responsibility of being there for my employees. So, um, you know, and that, that's like a 24-hour job. You oh, know, yeah. I've gotten texts in the middle of the night. I've gotten, you know, wee hours of the morning, you know. And then just caring for them on a personal level. I know about their families. I know who their children are. You know, I've had people be in financial binds that needed assistance. I was always more than willing to help them. Like, um, it's just being a good human. Yeah. It's just that simple. I don't, you know, for me, it's a simple concept. 
Like, just it, be good, <laughs> well, I, think, I think the problem that happens in entrepreneurship is a lot of people get into business that probably shouldn't be in business. 100%. And they start making decisions on a dollar. And, yep. you know, it's, it's not about that. You know, it's, it's like, you know, recently, you know, I've seen companies that are financially incentivizing, you know, their employees for different things that you wouldn't normally incentivize them for. But they realize that the human capital is way more important than, you know, a short-term victory for the business financially. Right, right. You know, one thing that uh, you said there was interesting, too, is that one of the past episodes, Patrick Harder, uh, owns a company called Harder Restaurant Group. He's got nine restaurants, I believe. And he talked about he's been to graduations. He's been to weddings, he's been to bar mitzvahs, he's been to all sorts of stuff. And he's like, Matt, that endears you a little differently to your, your team yeah. when you're involved with them outside of the walls because you see each other in a different light and you know, they realize the, the, the relationship. Yeah. I mean, you, you see each other as humans, not just this is my boss. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's the same thing. We, we've had so many people have babies. You know, we have like Aladdin's babies. And so like a lot <laughs> of our staff, you know, throughout the years, we've had little babies grow up you know we get to see our each other's kids grow up you know into these you know older kids like for example that's my little sister over there you know she she's now serving tables you know she was a baby when we first started she'd come in and she'd clean the windows you know and now she, she is serving tables so I mean there's a lot of Aladdin's babies there's weddings you know people have actually met here that ended up getting married and you know so there's there's a lot of really cool uh, stories like that too which I love so talking about the franchise aspect Yes. That you got to see that firsthand, then you got to go into owning a restaurant. There's a lot of people that buy franchises that aren't restaurant people. You know, they they look at it as an investment or passive income or something they can run on its own. What would be some advice that you would give that when you had your days as a development director and going around that <clears throat> some trouble signs you saw or maybe some hey, if you're doing this, you need to change. I know you're going to say probably be in the restaurant a lot. Oh my gosh, you took the words right out of my <laughs> mouth. This is the problem. I think people buy restaurants, especially franchises, thinking that it's an easy buck. They're, they're going to sit at home, they're going to collect a paycheck. That is, there's nothing farther from the truth yeah. than that statement. If you, you have to be in your restaurant all the time, especially during its birth. Like I was working 100 hour weeks when I was doing these types of jobs. Like I was in my restaurant with no days off, like open to close every single day. So, you know, unless you're prepared to give of yourself and of your time and of your, you know, sanity and all of those things, <laughs> don't do it. You know, you, if, you, if you, you know, go into it thinking that you're going to sit at home and, you know, kind of have a hands out on approach, hands off approach, it's not going to work unless you have someone else who's your partner that's operating the restaurant for you. There yeah. has to be an operator. You know what I mean? It, it's not, it, I wouldn't recommend it if you're not going to put, put your all into it. Restaurant owners, did you know Matt has free online marketing courses that teach you how to successfully market your restaurant? Email support at mattplapp.com to get access to the courses and a free social media content calendar. Okay, so final question. You're, you're talking, somebody calls you up and says, hey Carla, it's Matt, uh, I own a restaurant. What is one piece of advice you'd give me without knowing my story? What's one thing that you would say? If you do this consistently, you'll, you'll have more profit in the, in the near future, but also long term. Take care of your people. Okay. That's the number one thing for me. Um, you know, I, I can't tell you how many rewards I, I have and that I reap daily because of my people. They're the ones, you know, at this point, once I've grown and I have multiple locations, I can't be at all three places at once. You know, it's the first time that I can't work open to close and still be at all three. So it's, it's essential that you have the right people in place because they have to act as your proxy at all these different places. And if they aren't the right fit and they aren't the right people, they will destroy your business single-handedly. But if they are, then the people who come in think that that person is the owner. So I can't tell you how many times people think Paul is the owner because they see Paul's face and he makes them feel like this is his place because he believes that it is because he cares about me and I care about him. You know, and, and so in a way, this is his place. It has been for the last 12 years and it will continue to be for as long as he will grace me with his you know, hard work. But um, I think that's the key, honestly. Because if you can do that and you have people in place that can help you build, you can build in three different places at once. Yeah. You know, you can't, you're not gonna build anything if you don't have the people to do it. Cool, well, I appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you for having me. That wraps up another episode of MPTV. Make sure to check us out at mptv.watch and we're out of here.